As always, Ted, kick us off. Who do you have as your winner of the week? I'm going with Georgia. They are back to their rightful place at number one in the country in the college football playoff rankings. Um, they're the best team. They're the best overall team. Uh, Ohio State number two, you know, which is interesting, still ahead of Michigan. Little then, little punishment for Michigan there? Yeah, perhaps. Yeah. So interesting. And then Florida State rounds up your top four and then Washington undefeated 10 and 0 is outside the top four uh, looking to stay alive as we talked about that Oregon State game. But um, I, I, I think Georgia is not just number one, but I think they are the clear number one in the country. I mean, I don't, I mean, there's, there's other good teams. Don't get me wrong, but they are the most complete football team to me. And it's not, not really that close that and they are they have gotten key guys healthy on offense lad mcconkey's back healthy brock bowers is back from the ankle situation carson beck is playing a really good football run game is going they got mims there what probably going to be a first rounder at left tackle back i mean not only are they playing really good football they're gaining steam yeah i know and that makes me think they're they're going to Neyland this weekend. Yeah. And they're a 10-point favorite. And I, they may win by three scores. I that's what I was about to say. I just I I don't have before the season started, I looked at this game and thought this is gonna be a really tough one on Georgia. I don't see that as the case anymore. I I think I think they could handle Tennessee easily. You you know what I think it's going to look like? I think it's going to play out exactly the way the Ole Miss game did. Hypel is awesome with the first 15 to 20 plays of a game, really exposing your weaknesses. Right? I could see Tennessee moving it early, scoring some points, crowds going, but I then I think that Georgia defense is going to settle in they're going to choke the life out of Tennessee just like they did Ole Miss, and that Georgia offense is going to roll. I, I think that's going to be a blowout win for Georgia. I think they're that good right now. Right, that true. is a tough atmosphere. But, dude, I just – I think they're really good. I do too. I, I, think, I think Georgia uh, – it, it's like they finally are uh, engaged in the season and. You know, they handled Old Miss, and I think they're going to do the same thing with Tennessee, man. I'm I'm with you. I think it, it may be tight early. There's just too much. They're just going to continue to constrict you on defense and adjust to whatever it is that, that you, you planned on being able to get over on them. And you know, they get a ton of credit for defense and not that much credit for offense, and their offense is excellent. So, yeah, they're they're – I feel like we are uh, looking really close at a three-peat, you know? It it feels that way. Now, there's also this. When it comes to that Georgia-Tennessee game, is Joe Milton the type of guy to knock off the number one team in the country? Mm. I, can, I, can I close my eyes and envision that? No. You know what's crazy? I feel like the only team in the country that I would give a chance to beat Georgia is Alabama. I mean, I say give a chance that I. That's not say, crazy I, at all. I think a lot of people see it that way. I know, but it's funny because Alabama has, you know, they're, they're number eight in the playoff rankings. And, you know, I, it's, I, I can't really say much about like they should be necessarily higher than that. I don't, I, I, I mean, that's a fair ranking, but I, this season is really played out exactly how Nick Saban would want it. I been able to operate through pretty much obscurity throughout the year left for dead early and have just gotten better and better and better. And, 
you know, they've, they've got a dangerous enough offense with some big plays and a good enough defense to give Georgia a real run for their money. I'm with you. And that SEC title game is already set. Yeah, that's the thing, though. I think Alabama can beat Georgia, but I don't think they can beat them twice. You know, that's an interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting way of looking at it because they they'll have to beat them twice. We keep them. We may find out. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Who do you have as your loser of the week? Oh, I had to go with the Cleveland Browns. Man, that massive investment they made in Deshaun Watson is not looking very good. He is out for the season, has some type of broken bone in his throwing shoulder, and is going to have to miss the the rest of the year. And I financially, it has been a disaster. Uh, they're going to, uh, as of right now, and with him missing the rest of the season, they will have paid $92 million, $92 million for 12 starts and 14 touchdowns. I, okay. There's quite a bit to unpack here. Now, the comeback win they just had in the way that Watson looked in that second half I think it had a lot of brand, uh, Browns fans excited. Like, mm-hmm. Hey, is this where he's turning the page? Season-ending surgery. <laughs> but that defense that they've got, Miles Garrett's going to be Defensive Player of the Year in the NFL. He's just been an absolute menace. But as a, as a former employee of the Cleveland Browns, this is the best way I can put it. When I watch NFL football on Sunday, I cheer for the teams that employed me. And there were a lot of them, six of them. <laughs> so I got a, I got a lot of teams, a lot of teams to cheer for. It has been pretty difficult for me to cheer for the Browns with him playing quarterback for him. And for me, Watson not being out on the field for him, it allows me to cheer for the Browns a little more. That that's where I'm at with it. So, yeah, that contract looks worse and worse and worse by the day it's got it's got potential to be the worst contract in the history of american professional sports but i'd rather watch them without him on the field that's just how i feel yep um it does i'm I'm with you on that contract and if only people could have seen that coming (laughs) <laughs> which I would say was everyone in the world except for the Cleveland Browns, right? <laughs> it's been it's been a nightmare. 92 million, 12 starts, 14 touchdowns. Who? Not remember, great. Remember when Sam Bradford, you know, caught flack for how much he made in his career? I Deshaun Watson has made more in the first two years of this contract that Sam Bradford made his entire career. Now that is not true. I think Sam made like $130 million. Well, okay. I guess for the contract he got hammered for. Yes. The initial, his rookie deal. His rookie deal. Yeah. Which is what? But, 70 million or something like that. But also from the NFL impact of this, the AFC North is the, the best, is the best division Ooh. in all of football. I mean, the Browns are a six and three football team. The Bengals are dead last in the AFC North right now at five and four. So what type of effect does this have on that division? The playoff picture, it, it's definitely a significant development, but I, I will be much happier watching the Browns without him on the field. So. I mean, there's a chance you have, what you may have three AFC North teams, right? Really good chance of that. Yeah. Make the playoffs. All right. Let's get to my winner and loser. But first, elevate your tailgate with Chapel Supply and Equipment in Oklahoma City. Chapel Supply and Equipment has generators and inverters on hand that'll give you all the power you need so you could take your tailgate to the next level. They've also got top of the line heaters that'll keep you warm during those cold tailgates later in the season 
They're Oklahoma owned and operated. Elevate your tailgate by calling 405-495-1722 or visit chapelsupply.com. That's C-H-A-P-P-E-L-L supply.com. And First Fidelity Bank knows how to keep fans like you happy. With more than 50 awards in the last five years, including Forbes Best in State Bank, the Oklahoma's Community Choice Awards, and the Journal Records Reader Rankings, it's clear that they are Oklahoma's number one pick for quality banking. And you can find that level of outstanding service in everything FFB offers. Open an account at an award-winning bank today at ffb.com. First Fidelity Bank, we go where you go. And head to opolisclothing.com for our podcast merchandise and the best OU gear out there. That's O-P-O-L-I-S clothing.com. Use promo code TED, T-E-D for 10% off. That's opolisclothing.com. Use promo code TED for 10% off. Buttery soft and 10% off. For my winner of the week, thought about going with Oregon. Mm. Every list out there has Dan Lanning as a potential candidate for the Texas A&M job. He came out and said this, quote, I'm not going anywhere. There's zero chance I would be coaching somewhere else. I've got unfinished business here. Now, Ted, he wouldn't be the first guy to say something like that and then end up leaving, but he feels, it it feels like he's very happy at Oregon and he's not going anywhere. And that fan base has to be thrilled. Yeah. Yeah. I, if, if he considers leaving Oregon to go to Texas A&M people close to him need to grab him and shake him and slap him out of it. Wake up. You don't want to go to that place. You got a chance to possibly go win a national championship this year at Oregon. All right. They're going to be able to pay you just as much as Texas A&M be able to recruit just as good or better than Texas A&M. You're going to have just as good of an opportunity in the big 10 as Texas A&M. It's Texas A&M is not a better job than Oregon. It's not just flat out is not a better job. He made the smart call by coming out and slapping all of the, the, the talks down smart by him. Yeah. And it, I think as long as landings at Oregon, the ducks are going to be a problem. I'm, I'm a big fan of his Mm -hmm. and he knows he knows what it takes. He knows how you have to build a roster, and he's got Phil Knight. That helps. That's the thing. That's what's great about it. You know, okay, Texas A&M has a bunch of money from a bunch of donors who all want influence over one person who I don't think wants influence. He just wants you to win. Right, he just he just wants a national title before he dies. That's it. That's all he wants. That's it. So smart. But my winner of the week, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Great week for the squad. Uh, beat the Suns on Sunday with an awesome fourth quarter, and thirty five points from SGA, thirty one from Jalen Williams. He was awesome in that game. And then I was there, Ted. Where were you when the Oklahoma City Thunder won their first in-season tournament game in franchise history? What's up? Let's go. I was where was I? I was in uh on the couch in the second quarter. That's whenever it was over, right? Yes. And that was a beatdown. They destroyed the Spurs. 123-87. I'm glad to hear you're watching already, man. Look yeah. at you. Yeah, I'm watching. I'm uh, watching. Couple, that was fun. Couple, Couple things from being there in person. Paycom Center's getting back in shape, baby. Really? Crowd is getting good. Okay. Yeah, we're start we're we're starting to get back into form. Some uh, you know, the crowd was good, loud, energetic. I'm getting excited about what this season's going to be. The game was being built as this battle between Wimbanyama and Chet. Neither guy really did a whole lot. Chet had nine and seven. Wimby had eight and 14. For me, the game was just a reminder of how damn good Shea Gilgis Alexander is. 28 points in 28 minutes. Uh, The game was on TNT, so I'm sure he wanted to put on a show, and he absolutely did. He pretty much got wherever he wanted to go on the floor, Ted. That man is, I mean, he's a top 10 player in the NBA. I don't think there's any doubt in anyone's mind at this point. That man is fun to watch, dude. I mean, he was just, he was toying with those dudes from the Spurs. Mid-range God 
he's got everything. He's got explosiveness. He's got a handle. Um, exciting to watch. Yeah, he's he's incredible, man. That was that was an awesome, impressive, uh, awesome performance. What I was like, what what jumped out at me the most is that Chet looked like a normal basketball player when Wimby's out there. You know, it it makes it changes the perspective of everything. The, the I, paradigm it, shifts. Yeah, it's like, wait a second. He's not the tall, lanky guy out there anymore. Like, he is half a head shorter than Wimby. That's crazy, dude, how, how tall he is, man. He is, and he did have this one play. It happened right in front of us. The ball's, like, coming, and I can't remember who for the Thunders, like, trying to deflect the pass. He catches it and instantly goes behind his back then does like a subtle little Euro step and dunks it with two hands. And I was just sitting there going, what the hell was that? Like, What's what? He, how tall does he look whenever he's like a couple feet away from you? The tallest human being I've ever seen in my entire life. It's like a joke. Your brain doesn't even know how to process it. I think he's I listed at seven, four. I mean, there's no way he's definitely taller. He's gotta be taller. He looks so tall. It's, it's hard to describe. Watching him play basketball. I it, it changes the way it looks on TV. It looks like everyone has shrunk down to normal size people. And then there's the tall basketball player out there. It's like, wait a second. No, that guy right there is not six five. He's seven foot two and he looks like a toddler out there. It's crazy. Yeah, it's but a really nice performance. Franchise record 19 steals. And this one for the Thunder, defensive energy was great. Good to have Kenrich Williams back there. Look at him defending. My guy, I like that Mitsich guy. He's fun. He's fun. But, you know, Zach Collins got a little got a little rough with my man Mitsich, and Kenrich Williams wouldn't have in any of it. Love that about him. I just want to say this real quick. I don't think there's many of these people. But any of you clowns out there saying that the Thunder should start tr- thinking about trading Giddy, just shut up. <laughs> just shut up dude is 21 years old just had 18 7 and 7 in this one how about we give it a little time with this new group now that chet's in the mix okay everyone relax and he's a like this isn't a new thing for him to have a slow start and no, then, it happened last season yeah it's he's he as it starts as the weather starts to get better coming out of the uh out of the 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 deep cold in the winter, he gets better and better. Yeah, he's Australian. He's used to, I I don't know what the weather in Australia is like, but I've always imagined it's just warm the entire time and sunny yeah. and everyone's in a great mood. He just <laughs> needs, he needs to get it, it to get a little warmer. It's fine. That's right. But rebounding has been a big issue for the team and I they battled on the board. Still lost the battle, well, 43-30. Gave up too many offensive rebounds, but some improvement on that front. For my loser of the week, the Buffalo Bills hmm. lost it home to the Broncos on Monday night football in just brutal fashion. Oh my gosh. Broncos go with the bold decision of Mayday field goal uh, for the game winner. And Will Watts, first of all, former teammate, awesome guy, fantastic human being, misses. But 12 men on the field for Buffalo. Lutz gets another chance, drills it, game over. Broncos wins. Ted, this was a it was a sloppy game, but it was especially sloppy from Buffalo. Man, they just they make so many mistakes. And it starts with Josh Allen. That guy. I mean, he's amazing, but some of these turnovers he had are just brutal. Yeah. He he turns the football over too much. He's a he's a obviously a really talented guy. He's got a huge arm can make any throw he's athletic but he's inconsistent i'm sorry he's inconsistent he makes too many mistakes he turns the ball over too much and i know he drove down and and got the go-ahead uh points that they needed against denver but i he he lags pretty far behind in my opinion from the other top guys that he's compared with yeah, he had the two interceptions. I didn't think the first one was really his fault. Hits Gabe Davis right in the hands, but 
the second one before the half, it leads to points for the Broncos. It's just a bad mistake that hurts your football team. And then just fumbles the ball where he's handing it off and he just drops the ball. I don't know. It's strange. It's strange, man. And it, it made it feel even worse that Josh Allen looked that way when Russell Wilson looked the way that he did. Yep. He looked good. It, the crazy thing about that game is, I mean, Russell Wilson has just been getting hammered over the last two seasons for his level of play. If you didn't know anything about these two teams and you sat on the couch and you watched that game, you would have gone, oh, there's no doubt the guy on the Broncos is a better quarterback than the guy on the Bills, which is pretty alarming if you're a Buffalo fan. Now, yeah. everyone has their off days, but Monday night football at home, yep. Wilson outplayed him. I mean, there's just no doubt. Yeah. I, the the conversa- It's funny how different the conversation is if they don't have 12 guys out on the field for the field goal, you know? Yeah. If if there's not 12 guys out there on the on the field for the field goal, Denver looks stupid for running the May Day field goal whenever they didn't need to. And, you know, you're walking out of there with a win. Ken Dorsey probably still has a job as offensive coordinator and you sweep some of that stuff under the rug, but somehow 12 guys on the field gets the offensive coordinator fired. Um, and you know, it's just a, just a weird ending to that football game. And the worst part about it is I had, I, because I was watching the game and for whatever reason left the TV on and I sat through a bunch of cringeworthy Russell Wilson interviews post game. That was the worst part of the game. I, I didn't say that part of his performance was great, (laughs) but he did play well during the game and And he has played well. I mean, that, that wasn't a one-off performance. He's played pretty good. and Denver's still in it. Yeah. The only other thing on that game, so many of you guys, it was awesome. Yeah. I mean, B Ryan had a couple huge plays on that game winning yeah. drive for him in the past game. Yep. Uh, Marvin did. Mims was just killing it in the punt return game. Get that man the football more. Did you hear Sean. that that clip from him pregame? Yeah. So good. I did throw it to me, anyways. <laughs> that was awesome. He addressed it on Twitter. He said, just joking with the fan. Everyone needs to chill out. But yeah, there were Sooners all over the field in that one. But just uh, that's a tough loss for Buffalo. What are they now? Five and five? Yeah, they are, Denver, right? they are flirting with not making the playoffs. It's going to be tough. Like, like I was saying, um, you know, if because Miami six and three right now. And if you're talking about getting into the, the wild card race, the AFC North is loaded with football teams uh, that can really play Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Cincinnati's in last in that division, and they're five and four. So yeah. Raider, hey, Raiders are five and five. They're in Antonio the AFC Pierce, West. Okay. And they have, yeah, they've found a little found a little juice in that locker room ever since making the coaching change. How about that? The guy used to be a psychopath on the football field is doing a good job of head coach. Look at that. 